Now, there is another way to do Sleeve League. Down at Teelan Harbour, you can take a boat tour to see the cliffs from sea level. Paddy Byrne is our skipper. Well, Sleeve League, only discovered by Board Falcha there about 10 or 15 years ago. I'm working on it now for 25 years. For years back before that, the local fishermen would tow people out, or row people out, I should say, out to see the cliffs as well. There was visitors coming back in the last century, you know. But in the last few years now, with the Wild Atlantic Way, it has really taken off. It's really uh, it's a household name now, you know. My biggest fear is that it's going to be, we're going to be overrun with people. It's going to be swamped. It's going to be too big for, for the area, you know. Our infrastructure from Donegal Town Inn is getting better. There's improvements all the time, but it's just not up to the traffic we're getting at the moment, you know. Sometimes when you're, when you're looking at the rocks, it looks like they've been kind of squished and moulded. And that's um, because th th the rocks are actually recycled rocks. That at one time there were mountains here and they were reformed and re recycled. So you get a whole new set of mountains coming up. Geology, the study of rock formations, is a relatively new science. Its father was an obscure 17th century Danish anatomist, Nicholas Steno. For centuries, philosophers had puzzled at why you found seashells on the top of mountains encrusted in the rock nowhere near the sea. How did they get there? Were they shells at all? In 1669, Steno published a paper, De Salido, that explained the processes that push up mountains, melting and creating new rock. The seabed under us, full of old seashells and microplastics, will in time become the mountains of the future. It's the Wild Atlantic Way, not the Wild Atlantic Way. You'll see the sheep at various points along the cliff, folks. The mountain belongs to uh, about 15 or 16 families, and they graze their sheep up there, common as ground. And you'll see them in very peculiar places. We see them sometimes out at the water's edge. People like to get photographed with sheep, I don't know why, but um, <laughs> they tend to chase them down, and sometimes they don't get back up again, which is a bit of a unfortunate for the farmers. That, I tend to lose an odd sheep every summer, you know. The tower on the hill, folks, was built by the British to watch for the French during the Napoleonic Wars. In 1798, the Irish rebels planned a rebellion and they asked the French for help. The French sent a thousand soldiers and weapons for 5,000 rebels. And the plan was to land in Kinsale County Cork away in the south. But the Irish weather had other plans and they were blown off course and they landed away over here in North Mayo, just across the bay from us there. After the rebellion was crushed, the British built these towers all around Ireland, from Dublin Castle and way down and up as far as Manon Head. And every tower can see two towers. We're very lucky in this area we have three towers pretty much intact in fairly decent shape. Then as we round the point, we see the Sleeve League cliff face straight in front. Oh, it's just so spectacular. Like the cliff's going about 500 metres right up into the sky from here. And it was beautiful looking down on them, but looking up on them, it's, it's even better. It's standing just less than 600 metres. It's 1,972 feet. It's almost three times higher than the Cliffs of Moher. A wee bit less famous, but uh, that's not a bad thing either. Back up here in the corner, folks, is the giant's chair and table. Back in the old days, the women would climb down the cliffs behind there and they would gather any wreckage or timber that washed ashore, anything useful. They never, they never wasted a trip to the shore. They would have lines with them and baskets. They would gather edible seaweed or they would, gather, they would have their lines shot for a bit of fishing or something. But they never really wasted the trip down. The people are always horrified to find the women done this. The men were away doing important stuff like reading, reading the paper and, and smoking pipes. <laughs> Men would have been working in England at the time. The winter storms came in in the winter time them days, not like now we could get a winter storm any time. But back then the men would leave this area in the month of August and they would go off to work in England and Scotland on, uh, and on bigger farms in the midlands of this country and they would be working for maybe five or six months. They mightn't show up again back in this area till maybe April time. And when they would come home then they would start their new, start, plant their potatoes, start their harvest and leave their homestead self-sufficient again for the next season that they're away. The boat trip lasts about an hour and a half, 
with Paddy telling the history and a few tall tales about the area he loves. I just love it myself. I would come out here on my own days if there was nobody around, I'd just come out to do it. You know, I just love it and I know the weather conditions are right, you just don't want to be anywhere else.